This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Imperva. I'm sitting down right now with Ulfer Geyer, who is product manager at the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You ready to get started? Sure thing. All right. First question. Uh, now, what are the major challenges in mitigating DDoS? So DDoS has a premise. So the premise of DDoS basically is, is volume, right? Okay. I send you more traffic, more information than you can handle. Uh, but mitigating it is not only about the volume. So I need to have two major things. Okay. One is I need to have a lot of processing capacity that's related to the information I'm getting. So I need to have a lot of capacity. Uh, and the other one, I need, I'm still mitigating DDoS. So mm -hmm. I need to distinguish between which traffic is good and which traffic is bad. So that's, that's the harder part. So just having a lot of traffic coming in, I can either drop it, which is not very effective, but okay. I still need to have that relevant information, that good information to pass through. So I need to have good technology to distinguish between good and bad traffic. Okay. So these are the major challenges. Now to do this at scale, mm -hmm. that's another factor, another level of, of challenges that we have. Right, okay. And uh, now there are a number of different ways to solve the DDoS problem. Can you explain what they are exactly for me? So basically, there's a couple of approaches. Uh, one would be you can obviously try to write something on your own. Okay. So build your own homegrown kind of solution, uh, like a lot of uh, companies try to do. Okay. Um, you can try to buy uh, an on-premise solution, uh, okay. uh, a box basically, mm -hmm. that uh, performs DDoS mitigation uh, activities. Yeah. Um, you can go to a service like we provide. Uh, so it's a, a SaaS kind of approach, a cloud service uh, that provides DDoS mitigation. Mm -hmm. Or you try to maybe combine um, couple of them together if you have deficiencies in, in any one of them. Uh, okay. So these are the, the kind of the four basic approaches you can have. Got it. Okay. And now at the 30,000 foot level, how does DDoS mitigation cloud solution work exactly? So the cloud solution works by, you need to send traffic through another system. So right. imagine you're the, the wimpy little kid and you don't have a lot of power. Okay. So co someone comes in and threatens you. So now you're calling your, your, your big brother, mm -hmm. which in this case will be Imperva. Okay. Um, so you send traffic through Imperva, um, and traffic gets sent and, and processed, what we call scrubbing sometimes, okay. through our servers. And we have very, very big resources to do this. Mm, okay. um, and they, they uh, depending on the type of asset we're protecting, they will filter the traffic, distinguish between good and bad traffic, and only send the clean traffic back on a secure channel back to you. Wow. So you get only the clean traffic. It's like we're filtering everything for you okay. before it hits your area, your infrastructure. Okay, got it. That makes sense. And now, what can a client expect when they engage in a DDoS mitigation solution? So when you onboard the service, there's a couple of things uh, you need to understand. So how okay. does the setup work? Um, how do I integrate my system and my assets, and how does the system cover and make sure that I've got everything covered? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the attackers always look at the weakest link. They will attack where you're the weakest. They have right. no added bonus points if they attack you where you're the strongest. Um, and the second part is how what happens when I'm under attack. Mm -hmm. So wh exactly what's the scenario? What's the playbook? Do I need to do anything? Uh, is, do I have any responsibility? What am I actually getting? What's my SLA? So mm. what what is the company? What does the service provide me with? And what kind of attacks uh, am I covered for? So what right. we call the attack uh, surface. What's the attack surface I have? And how do I get it covered completely with the solution I chose? Okay. And now, uh, what would you say are the pitfalls, and what do you need to really watch out for? So there's a lot of different things depending on type of attack. Yeah. But we like to focus on three things. Um, first is, when you get attacked, mm -hmm. you want to prevent downtime and impact to your service. Right. right. So the number one thing is you want to mitigate that as fast as possible. Right. If I, yep. if I have a fire extinguisher in my house and it works 10 minutes after the fire started, then it's I'm no not, not really good. Five minutes, not really good. I want it 
like that. Yep, makes so sense. So what we call time to mitigation is very, very important. So you want that okay. as fast as possible. The other part is I don't want if the fire extinguisher works, takes out the fire, but ruins my house, it's not doing a very okay. good job, yeah. right? So I want to avoid impact while I'm mitigating. So if I need to send traffic, like I said, we're sending traffic, you know, it's going through our service in mm -hmm. this case, right? I don't want impact to latency or performance or, or false positives or any impact to, to the actual good traffic. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to have a penalty to pay, yep. right? Uh, and the last thing is we talked about capacity and you need to have the right type of capacity. Okay. So if I'm sending you simple attacks, it might be easier to mitigate. But if I'm sending you, if you're a DNS service and I'm mm -hmm. flooding you with DNS packets, then it's a harder job, right? right? So you need to really understand the capacity as it relates to the asset that I'm protecting and the kind of threats that I have. Okay, got so it. So time to mitigation, mm -hmm. latency, and capacity. Okay. And now I was wondering, can you share a case study on how you protected a customer against a DNS server attack? Yeah, we, we have um, a, a spectrum of services. One of them will be the, the DNS protection service. So mm -hmm. basically we would scrub DNS attacks like the ones uh, we've seen on Dyn DNS that affected a lot of the internet. Right. Uh, one customer, one of the problems they had was with two of the factors I talked about. One is the time to mitigation. So okay. they had a solution in place, but it only started working about, about five minutes <sighs> in. So it started working and the attack stopped but users were affected and they went away. It's that too late. Yeah. impacts revenue, that impacts user experience, that degrades a company's reputation. Mm -hmm. um, and the second part was they're sending it to a very far away data center that was impacting latency. Um, they told us, listen, we're not, we're not believing that it, it can work, but we'll give you a try. Okay. And they were, they were kind of amazed that, you know, okay, it, it works like this. Okay, this is good for us. We can actually that fast, use this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a wow factor sometimes for companies that are used to uh, kind of an old school solution or something that wasn't really a good fit for them. Yeah, that's incredible. Okay. Yep. And uh, now, what do you think the future looks like? Increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? So there's, um, in terms of volume, it's always increasing. Uh, yeah. There's Moore's Law with CPUs that doubles every 18 months or so. Same thing. It, it, it translates to DDoS as well. So every 12, 18 months, we see almost doubling of the wow. capacity, right? But, you know, companies like us, we need to stay ahead. So we're not, we're more than doubling every 12 months, which is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to have technology that can actually scale that way. Yep. Moving from, you know, half a terabit to one terabit to five terabits, that's that's not linear in, in, um, in, in the problems that it, it generates for your infrastructure. Um, and the second part is attackers, like I said, they're always looking for the soft spot, mm -hmm. okay? If you have IoT devices, they're a soft spot to generate a, a botnet from, they will go from them. If they have a new soft spot, there's a new vulnerability out, they will use that to generate the new botnet. They yep. don't care, they just want easy, yep. easy to Exploit make money. Exploit right away. Exploit right away. Um, and the same thing with what they're attacking. So maybe it's DNS, maybe it's home users, maybe it's your mail infrastructure, whatever it you have that's yep. easy to target, they will go for that. So they're always moving in that in that way and trying to find the, the easiest way to make the most impact. Okay. And uh, now from your perspective, how would you say that the attackers, you know, are changing their tactics over time? So one of the key elements, and I'll, I'll show this in the demo, okay. is attackers, they're becoming more sneaky. Yeah. Like I talked about time to mitigation. So attackers, they kind of know this. So they know sometimes it takes for certain solutions some time to respond. Maybe there's a human involved, what do we call clicking buttons, right. uh, to, to kind of mitigate the attack. Attackers, they, the most sophisticated ones, uh, they understand that. So they become more sneaky. They mm -hmm. will change attack vectors automatically, really quickly. They would try to circumvent the, the mitigation efforts and find that little hole. Mm. It, I don't need a lot. If you're a, if you're a target and I have a hundred gigabit botnet, I, I can take you down with one percent of my strength. Wow, it's, it's all I it's need. It's that right? easy. It's yeah. that easy. Even zero point one percent of my strength. Um, so they just need a little bit to come through. They just need. 0.1% of success to to have their way. So Got it. That's, that's why companies have to stay ahead. Yep. Exactly. Got it. Okay. And then uh, any last things that you would like to highlight about, you know, the company as a whole? 
So the company as a whole, we're, we're, we're focusing on DDoS. We, we've built our own technology. This is why we can do things kind of different. Mm -hmm. you know, everything we do are, is, is homegrown. Everything is automatic. Uh, it's one of the things that enable us to scale. We do everything automatic with technology. Nice. Uh, and I encourage companies and, and people to understand the risk. First of all, if you don't have any solution, even if you have a solution right now, mm -hmm. understand, like he said, what happens when you get attacked, how does it affect your business, and what, what measures do you have to mitigate the threat? Just right. answer these basic questions. Mm -hmm. You're already 50% through. Fair enough. Well, thank you so much for uh, sitting down and speaking with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Always Absolutely. Good to talk about DDoS. <laughs> nice. Yep. And that's all the time that we have for today. So be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.